As we head towards spring, maybe you're hoping for one more snow. Well, the chances of that happening are getting slimmer and slimmer, but there is a chance, I think, as we head into next week for parts of the Mid-Atlantic and maybe the Northeast. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to go into some of the details. I still think there's a chance on the table, but not this week. We're way too warm for that. We've got broad southwest flow across most of the country. And we're watching something kind of wild across the West. A big ridge is going to start to develop here across the Pacific Northwest while an upper low drops into the four corner states. This is going to bring rain and snow to these areas. In fact, snow could be decently heavy in the parts of Colorado and then some cool weather all the way down into Southern California while we get above normal across the Pacific Northwest. Across the east, on the east side of the slow, deep southwest flow keeps us warm pretty much from Texas all the way to Maine. Temperatures above normal. That's not going to last, though, because we're watching a piece of energy kind of go up and over this ridge, and then it starts to dive here into parts of North and South Dakota by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday, and we're still watching this crazy cutoff low across the Southwest. The problem with these cutoff lows, they're very hard to forecast. Uh, there's no real steering currents to them, uh, so I want to take really where this is going to be with a grain of salt. And as far as this forecast goes, as we look into next week, you know, we won't get a real good idea of the strength of this trough, this ridge, and where will this upper low be? There's really three big questions. That's going to determine the forecast. But let's go ahead and put things into motion. I'll show you what the Europeans is coming up with this afternoon. The GFS is also on board with this idea that we see a trough, a decent sized trough across the eastern United States early next week. And that potentially could bring the development of a winter storm somewhere here on the east side of this trough as it moves up the coast. Well, do I believe it? I'm starting to. And because not only is the European showing that, this is the GFS, a different global model showing the idea still of there's your upper low, here's your ridge moving up across the Pacific Northwest, and then here comes our energy diving into the northern plains. So you've got two big global models agreeing in the upper levels as to what's going to be happening. The question is, again, how strong will all of these players be? That's where your weather balloon data comes in. That gets plugged into the models and it gives you a better forecast. I think that starts to get ironed out much better by Saturday and Sunday. And we're still talking about a storm that would be potentially next Tuesday. So seven days from now, at least. The GFS, though, also on board with the idea of a trough in the east, but it looks a little bit different. In fact, this is more of a mid-Atlantic storm than a northeast storm if you're to believe the GFS. I don't know that I believe either one or the other at this point, but I do like the idea of below normal temperatures heading into the early to middle part of next week with the potential of a winter storm on the table. Let's start across the east. Temperatures will be warmer than average as we head into Tuesday, above average. In fact, in many areas, rain showers start to push to the east as we see that return flow here across parts of Indiana, Kentucky, and then we really start to see Gulf moisture get picked up and brought north here heading into Thursday and Friday. And then high pressure to the north, low pressure here. You start to get that upslope component going here with the pressure gradient really building here. And that's going to create some decently heavy snow, I think, from Nebraska all the way into parts of Colorado. Some areas could pick up more than a foot of snow here from Nebraska into parts of northern Colorado, even into the Rockies. That's really where I think we'll see the heavy snow and along the front range. Denver, you're in the game for some decent snow out of this. And then from the Cascades down into parts of the Sierra, we'll see additional snow and into the Intermountain West as well. Let's continue on heading toward the weekend. This is Friday. We've got rain and snow now moving into parts of the Mid-Atlantic. And then along the north side of this, there could be some snow, especially into parts of upstate New York. So we're talking about the Adirondacks, the Green and White Mountains, the northern parts of Maine. And now we're watching this upper low and our upper level energy diving in from the northwest. What happens here? Well, yesterday, if you watched, you know, we had low pressure forming here and it was really going up the coast. So today's European run, a more positively tilted trough. It has low pressure really starting to form here and then blowing up across New England. Not nearly as far south as it was yesterday. Yesterday's run versus today's, a complete different story. Do I believe either one? No, I do not. I said the same thing yesterday. This is today's. Again, I don't know that I believe it at all. Look at the GFS, though. I want to show you something. It's picking up on the idea, and this is what I want to forecast, is this trough. Do you have the trough? Then... Do you have a storm? And then we'll worry about where that forms. Again, as this energy moves ashore, we'll, these models will get a better idea of what's going on. But look at the GFS. This is a mid-Atlantic snowstorm. We've not seen this yet. Today was the first we've seen this. So Kentucky, maybe Tennessee, West Virginia, 
Virginia, Maryland? Maybe. Maybe in the game. Something I'll be tracking. If you think you like this kind of stuff, I absolutely love tracking these winter storms six, seven, eight days out and the energy that's associated with them. Subscribe below. I hope you'll do that. Let's go ahead and move forward, though, and look at the differences on the European model. This is today's output. This is yesterday's. I circled this area yesterday and said, if you guys tell, think I'm telling you it's going to snow this much, eh, it's not what I'm saying. I'm showing you the trend. And listen, it's going to do a windshield wiper effect. You're going to go from one extreme to another this far out. I'm looking at the upper levels. Is there a trough? Yes, it's showing up. Is it still there today? Yes, it is. Will there be low pressure forming? At this point, I think there will be. I have to pick a side. I think there will be. The GFS Ensemble still trying to put out some snow here, so I'm not giving up. And I'm not wish casting and hope casting because no matter what I hope for, it doesn't really matter in the end. Now, beyond this, I think it stays stormy too. I don't think we're done with storminess. And I'm not talking about snowstorm. I just mean unsettled weather. It just looks busy as we head toward the end of the month with more mid-latitude cyclones, these areas of low pressures that will likely form and just cause unsettled weather, rain and snow and wind, all the above. So that's why I think March still goes out like a lion for many of you. All right, that's all I got. See you next time.